Hello and good day. All right, so today we're going to talk about conjunctions and some of the conjunction tools. Not extremely complicated, but it'll give you a little bit of an idea of where conjunctions occur when you're talking about orbits. The main thing to know here is that to make or ensure that conjunctions work correctly, we want to go to the TLE and SATCAT tab and ensure that update catalog has been updated fairly recently. Doesn't necessarily have to be within the last day or so, but within the last few days is probably appropriate. Let's go back here to the conjunctions tab. You'll notice that there is a pull down here for top 10 conjunctions by maximum probability and top 10 conjunctions by minimum range. The main one we want to choose is by maximum probability. All of this data is updated through Socrates on Celestrock.com. You can see the link here if you'd like to go yourself. To update it, you would just simply click update and I'll do that in a minute. Notice the last time that the Socrates was updated for conjunctions onto the workbook shows the time here and as long as the time is generally within a day or so those conjunctions are still accurate. If the conjunction is older than a day old it will show as a red cell with white lettering so that you know that it's time to update it. I've updated this fairly recently. Let's go to this first one here Cosmos 1850 and Iridium 20 and you'll notice down here a little bit it shows a selected conjunction. The names are a little bit different because it links to the catalog that I've downloaded from Spacetrack. It is not necessarily the same information that's come in from Socrates website directly but the NORAD catalog numbers are the same and the conjunctions work the same. Let's create conjunction and this only takes a couple seconds it's just quickly generating two satellites. Let's go back to Google Earth and I've already brought this in from the desktop. We'll right click and revert. And there you see the conjunction, the two satellites and a simulated error ellipse. Those cones don't necessarily reflect the actual error ellipse but it gives you an idea of where that satellite is within that error ellipse. Let's go back to the workbook. We're going to try something else. Let's go back down to number seven here. And I want to highlight something really quickly. Let's hit create conjunction. Okay, now the date of the conjunction has already passed based on the given time on the date and time tab. Do we want to proceed? Let's click no. And it's not going to create the conjunction. That reason, as you see here, this date has already occurred. There's no reason to create the conjunction because it's already in the past. Let's really quickly go to update. And we're going to update the conjunction. This again only takes a few seconds. It's going to the Socrates website, downloading the two functions for maximum probability and minimum range. And as soon as that's complete, we'll have an updated conjunction. Okay, now we're back and you can see that those conjunctions have now changed. The time of the latest update is now updated so these are more accurate. So let's go back to the new number one highest probability conjunction and you can see that the delta time, this is how many days in the future for each one of those satellites we're looking and it will generally look within seven days. The time of closest approach is the time that the conjunction has calculated. We'll look at the minimum range and the relative velocity. This column here basically tells you if those satellites are approaching each other or moving in generally the same direction based on how fast those approaches occur. Let's hit create conjunction and once again it's only going to take a couple seconds, a few seconds, there we are. Right click and revert 
and here is the new number one maximum probability conjunction. And for now, quick lesson on conjunction analysis from the Orbital Dynamics Calculations Workbook. Please tune in for further episodes. Thank you.